Welcome to my Parsons Manor website or YouTube channel. I am making blueberry wine from last year's blueberries. I was cleaning out the freezer and I had bags and bags of frozen blueberries. Uh, you can preserve the flavor of blueberries by freezing them, making jelly, or making wine. I'm making wine, and this is some of the best wine that I make, I think. I enjoy it the most, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna make five gallon batches, uh, because I have enough to do a few five gallon batches, but I'll start off with about 15 pounds of blueberries per five gallon batch. I'll use somewhere around 12 pounds of sugar, but the way that I determine that is by taking a, a specific gravity reading, um, and that starting gravity will tell me how much sugar is actually in the berries and how much how much sugar I need to add to them. I usually get around 1.14 is what I'm shooting for. It'll give me a little bit of a drier wine, not too dry, semi maybe, and then I can always sweeten it if I don't don't like that at the end. I'll use uh, either lemon juice or acid blend for a five gallon batch. In a five gallon batch, I'll use probably teaspoon, 10 teaspoons of acid uh, blend or maybe just two or three lemons squeezed into it. I'll use um, yeast nutrient to help kickstart the yeast and give it something to eat on in there. I'll use about for five gallons, I'll use a teaspoon of gallon, so I'll use about five teaspoons of that. Um, I'll use some pectic enzyme to knock down the pe pectin. Um, if you're making jelly, you want to have all the pectin in there you can stand so it'll become like jelly. If you're wanting to make something to drink, you don't want a jelly-like substance, so you'll put an enzyme in there that'll eat all the pectin, and that's pectic enzyme. And uh, I'll use for five gallons, I don't know, if you if you have the liquid, you'll probably use about five drops per gallon or so. Um, I've never overused it. I've used it two or three times through the process of making wine in one batch, you know, uh, at the start, one time in the middle, and a little later on, is you're not gonna over pectic enzyme it probably. If you're using the powdered, I would probably use two and a half teaspoons for five gallons of the powdered pectic enzyme just to make sure uh, that you could knock down all that pectin you can because that's the stuff that'll make it hazy and and you don't want that in your wine. You want it as clear as you can possibly get it. Uh, I use Red Star yeast. Uh, it's, it's specifically for winemaking. I get all of my winemaking supplies locally from Miller's Feed and Seed. That's uh, to me the best place to get them. I enjoy doing it there. And uh, so you do, you, you can make your wine however you like it, but this is just my recipe. Very simple, that small handful of ingredients. You got your water, which I'll, I'll, I'll use 15 pounds of blueberries and then I'll top it off with hot boiling water. In fact, I'm boiling water right now on my little uh, stove top that I've got here in my honey barn. And, uh, and I'll go ahead and and top, top the blueberries off with that. And I'll go through the process with you here as we go along so you can see each step and hopefully it'll help you. Very simple recipe, but one I hope hope that you can enjoy. Okay, I've just weighed these out. This is right here, exactly 15.19 pounds of blueberries. This is what it'll take to make one five gallon batch if you're running about three pounds per gallon and that's normally what I do. Now you can double that and make a heavier wine, but this gives you, I think, best blueberry flavor and goes the farthest. Now the thing I do with my blueberries is I take them and I'll, I'll crush them in the bag like this. I wear these gloves just in case, but I crush them best I can. They are very cold, but they are thawed, but they've been in the freezer all night. Now I have a, a fruit crusher up there that's really nice and you can run them through it but the it it the, the time i do the cleanup and everything on that thing it takes so long because there's so many little pieces and parts to it um you may be looking at this and thinking you've got a much better way to crush blueberries and if you do that's probably the way you need to do them please suggest it to me um 
I always like trying new ways of doing things, but if you don't get them all crushed up perfectly, they soften over the period of fermentation and they, they'll do well. And uh, anyway, so then I just open them up after that and dump them in here just like that. And that's one bag of them gone. So I'll do that with the rest of these until I get all 15 pounds inside. This is my last bag. This will be the full 15 pounds in this bucket. This bucket is a six gallon bucket. It gives me a little bit of room to work with it, to add things to it. But there it is, there. And you'll see some of them are not perfectly broken up, but I'll probably go back over this with my gloved hands and reach in there and mash a few more um, before it's over with. Something else the pectic enzyme does that I, I failed to mention is it also breaks up the fruit a little bit for you and helps with that. And I'll show you when we add it and uh, there's a debate going on in the homemade wine world of when you're supposed to add it. And uh, I'm not super particular, there's a leaf. I'm not super particular as to when I add it. I've added it, like I said, at different times and I, I have pretty consistent results with my wine. And that's, that's what you want. If you find a recipe you like, you want consistent results. You want to taste, if it's good, you want to taste good every time. And so, but I've tried things differently along the way to see if I could improve or do things differently. And, and, um, doesn't seem to matter when I put my pectic enzyme in completely, but we'll talk about that a little more in detail when I add it so we can have some understanding of how it works. Also, I do not use Camden. Uh, there's something called sodium metabisulfite or potassium metabisulfite, which are preservatives. If you've ever looked on a commercial bottle of wine, it'll say may contain sulfites. Well, there's no may about it, it does. Sulfites often added at this stage. Sometimes they are added at a midway point. If the wine is racked, it may be added again. And sometimes it's added at bottling. It does a few things. It kills all the bacteria that you don't want in here that might affect taste or might affect the uh, processing of uh, the regular yeast itself. Um, so you, you add it to prevent, sometimes to prevent um, fermentation uh, it will do that to some degree but it's really added to make sure things stay stay fresh and don't get ruined it's a preservative I don't add it in mine the thing I do is I make sure I wash my buckets with it I wash all my bottles with it I sanitize all my countertops my utensils with it I do all of that but I don't add it to my wine uh, my wife has a sensitivity to sulfites and so a lot of people do and I don't want to cause any problem for anybody and I like this to be as close to the earth as I can get it and uh, I don't use pesticides or anything of that nature on my blueberries don't really have to they don't have too many enemies around here but uh, I just try to keep it as pure as I possibly can so I don't add that chemical if you want to add it because it's part of a recipe that you have used in the past you feel free to do so it's perfectly fine it's just, um, it's something that, that I don't do, and uh, you can choose what you want to do. Now, for my water, I've got 12, 12 quarts of water in here. That won't be quite enough water to add, bring this to five gallons, but I've got, I've got to add sugar to this, so I need some room in my pot. I'm gonna add 12 and a half pounds of sugar, and so uh, two cups, makes one pound basically so if you do the math it's about 25 cups of sugar so I'm just going to measure out four cups at a time up until I get 25 cups I'm going to pour that into my water and stir it and make sure it's completely dissolved and that'll be my basically my starting point for where I think I want to be with the sweetness of this particular recipe
25 pounds of sugar. Or the ingredient I didn't mention earlier is tannin. You can add tannin if you like. Tannin is an optional ingredient. It gives it more of a bite, a little bit of a, almost like the taste that that grape wine might have. And um, I use about a half a teaspoon on five gallons. Some people like it a little more of a dryness to their tongue, the, the feel, and so they'll add more, but that's, that's what I use. Yeast nutrient, I'll use five teaspoons of yeast nutrient. I'll do five of the blend. I don't have any lemons down here with me, so I will use um, 10 teaspoons of the acid blend. Now while the water is hot, this is all that I'm going to add in here for now. I need it to cool down. So you can cool it down if, if you didn't fill it all the way up to the five gallon mark. You can cool it down by adding water that you've boiled ahead of time and let cool to room temperature. Or you can use an ingenious device that looks like a coil. It is, uh, it cools hot liquids, and I'll show you what that looks like. This is called a wart chiller. This sets down in your five gallon bucket, hangs over the edge, so it'll work at a five gallon all the way up to an uh, eight gallon bucket, maybe even bigger. And uh, you just hook one end up to your sink cold water to come in, it circulates through this, goes out the drain end, right back into the drain of your sink or into a bucket if you want to use it to water flowers or something. And uh, it'll cool it down. I could cool five gallons of hot liquid down in about five minutes if I stir it. Yeah, so, but if I don't stir it, it'll take a lot longer than that. So it's a very handy device. I'm not going to use it today because I'm doing several batches and by the time I'm through doing the third batch, my first bucket will be cool enough that I can add the other ingredients. So I started another batch of water the minute that I poured this other one up, so I know I'm gonna be doing another five gallons. So I've got my mixture just like I want it with about 15 pounds of uh, muscadines and about 25 cups of sugar or 12 to 12 and a half pounds based on how sweet I want it to be. So we've finished up the, uh, the cooking of the water and pouring all of the blueberries in and now I have got it in its respective five gallon buckets. It's gonna sit here for the next 10, 12 days till it slows down on the fermentation process. We're going to move it into glass carboys. And here it is in the glass carboys. This is the product. There is 5, 10, 15, 25 gallons. This is a completely different color than this because I reused all of the spent berries from one into another one. Amazingly, even though this is darker in color than this one, this particular one will take on a much darker color later the longer it sits. So now we will sit oh, for about three months. I will move it again into yet another glass jug, leaving all the sediment in the bottom. And uh, then I'll let it sit for almost a year before I put it in the bottles. And once I put it in the bottles, we'll put it over here on the uh, shelf and uh, have some blueberry wine.